will be coming from 1 Kings Old Testament Scripture. 1 Kings chapter 19. If you have it, say amen. 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 If you don't say it on me. First Kings chapter 19, verses 1 through 8. And it reads, And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. And with a howl he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die, and said, It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights unto horror the mount of God. Amen. The word of God for God's people and the people of God say amen. 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 At this time, we have another selection coming from our father.
song that ministers to me. Yeah. It gets all in my Then Jezebel sent a message to Elijah to tell him, so let the gods do to me and more. If I make not your life as the life of one of them, and I'm going to do it by tomorrow. Oh. About this time. <laughs> and when he saw, in other words, when he heard, he arose and ran for his life. Didn't go to Beersheba. <laughs> Beersheba is who uh, David slept with. <laughs> but he ran to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah. And he left all of his servants there. But the Bible says, for he himself, went a day's journey into the wilderness, came and sat down under a juniper tree. Mm -hmm. And while he was there, he had too much time to think. And he requested for himself that he might die. And say is enough. <laughs> now, O oh Lord, stop the cow now. Take away my life. For I am not better than my father. Oh. And as he lay and slept under the juniper tree, an angel touched him, mm. said unto him, Rise, Elijah, and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake bacon on the coals, and a cruise of water 
at his hand. God can place it where he is. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him, said to him again, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for you. And Elijah rose, he did eat and drink, and went in the strength of that meat, what he had eaten, and that water that he had drunk, lasted him for 40 days and 40 nights. And he got up and went to Paul the Mount of God. Let us bow our hands. Father, let the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. You are my strength. You're my redeemer.
prosperity, and other times when they experience adversity. Solomon in his wisdom said in Proverbs chapter 24, verse number 10, that if thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. If you faint in the day of adversity, then your strength is small. Wow. So I ask myself, what does strength mean in this verse? In Proverbs 24. Because Ezekiel's name means strength of God. So, so what does strength mean in our text? And what is the sign? Well, strength means uh, or, or it does not refer to physical strength. But it refers to the sum of our abilities with power, our vision, and our God-given destinies, which is our assignment here on earth. Our assignment is so different than Jesus' assignment. No. And Jesus said that his assignment was to seek and to save that which is lost. When Jesus came on the scene, on the scene and he began to seek and to save that which was lost. Called 12 disciples and gave them the same assignment. And he shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses. First, you want to do it at home. Then you want to do it with your neighbors. And then you're going to reach out to everybody. Mm -hmm. And so, we have been assigned to seek and to save that which is lost. Now listen, it's a good thing to learn how to make positive confessions about our lives. But making positive confessions won't stop the day at adversity from coming. You can confess all day that you're the head and not the tail. And you'll still be on the tail of me. You can say that you are the lender and not the borrower. And you can't wait to get out of church to borrow something. I know we confess that no weapon formed against us will not cross. But the weapons are born evil. And instead of prosperity, you're encountering adversity on every hand. But even though your confession won't stop the day of adversity, it will give us beautiful ashes at the end of the day. But it is a must, church, that we have faith in God for a wonderful and prosperous life. But again, this won't prevent the day of adversity from coming. But by faith in God, it will keep us from sinking when the winds become boisterous 
on the sea of life. We then can generate strength, especially for our minds, by self-discipline. But all the physical and psychological measures are limited since there are factors and forces beyond our human control. So what we will always need is strength from the Lord. That's why the psalmist says, the Lord is the strength of my life. Because in the day of adversity, the wicked will come against you and try to eat up your flesh. So you don't faint and succumb under the pressure. But you rise to the occasion because you know that the Lord is your strength. He's your leading post. He's your hope. And he will give you what you need to meet the challenge. That's why he's Jehovah John. He will provide. And so we find in our text that at a time Elijah's life, after slaughtering about 400 prophets of Baal, he was threatened by Jezebel. And he sought to end, to end everything under the Jupiter tree. Mm -hmm. He wanted to take his life under the Juniper tree. Yeah, yeah. What situations made him feel nothing was special about him. And he began comparing himself to his father. Preachers don't ever get to a place when you start comparing yourself to somebody else. Don't ever get to a place when you allow others to compare you with others because your assignment came from God. Yeah. Despite your shortcomings, despite your deficiencies, you still have an assignment. Amen. When you're tired, hallelujah, that's not the time to give up, but it's the time to get another healthy of strength from heaven. You don't sell a dumpy car because the gas in your tank has been used up. You simply go get some more gas. Put your car back on the road. Keep looking straight toward heaven and keep on riding. Under the juniper tree, this tree offers insufficient shape. Not enough. This tree is not enough. But it is a, a refuge for desert travelers. And that's who we are. This world is not our home. We are desert travelers. But God sent an angel to feed Elijah not once but twice because of the journey that's ahead. He became so strong after that that he went in the strength of that one meal for 40 days and 40 nights. I don't know what kind of food in our present day that can give me enough strength to last for 40 days and 40 nights. But whatever it is, yeah. may God feed it to us now. Yeah. Because now yeah. will be the time yeah. that we need yeah. that kind of substance. Yeah. So when strength comes back to you, a lot can change when strength comes. Yeah. The eyes and the other parts of you become empowered to help you to get where you're called to go and do what you're called to do.
called to do. Many times I come here and I say, I'm tired. I'm just tired. And somehow, all of a sudden, somebody may sing a song. Somebody may have a testimony. If they want to hear 
And when they don't, preach the word at all times. If they like it, and if they don't, you just preach the word. Even if you become tired and discouraged, thinking the journey is too long, you preach the word. Even when you've been wounded by your own people, that you can't stay focused and strong anymore. You just keep focusing on Jesus. Even when you have been tempted to doubt the prophecies that had gone ahead of you, you just look at Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of your faith. Don't become weary in way of doing it, for you shall reap if you faint not. Remember, there will be a day of adversity, but there will also be a day of prosperity. Yes. You go on now. Complete your assignment. Yes. Because trouble don't last all way. Yes. When the words of the poem don't quit. When things go wrong, as they sometimes will. When the road you are trudging seems all uphill. When the funds are low and the debts are high. And you want to smile, but you have to sigh. When care is pressing you down a bit, rest, even under the truth, if you must. But don't you quit. For life is queer with its twists and turns. As every one of us sometimes learn, and many a failure turns about. When it might have won, had you stuck it out. Don't give up, though the pace seems slow. You may succeed with another blow. Success, church, is failure. Turn inside out the silver tent of the clouds of doubt. And you never can tell how close you are. Maybe near, when it seems so far. So stick to the fight. When your heart is hit, uh -huh. it's when things seem worse that you must not do. Yes. It's under the juniper tree. Yes. You think you are ending it, but that will become your new starting point. Yes. So Paul tells his son in ministry, I fought the good fight. Yes. I finished my course. Yes. I kept the faith. Yes. What? 
everybody close your eyes. Let's close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes, close your eyes for a minute. Now I want you to imagine. Just want you to think with your mind. Just want you to imagine. You're in the Coliseum, and you're there because your favorite team is playing. And all of a sudden, you look out and you see your your favorite team. Come out. And all 
And the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it was given for you. Each one of you. And as we partake of it, and as we eat it, let us do it in remembrance of him. After they had eaten, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink you all of this. I want you to take it and drink it. And remember that his blood was shed for you, and not just for you, but for many, for the remission of our sins. Do this as often as you drink it and remember it. But well, thank you, Jesus. Because it is very neat, right, and how about we do that we should at all times and all places give thanks unto thee. O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and our things and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name. Evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. Amen. Amen. Let us now pray the Lord's prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you made us worthy to commune with you. Amen. 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 We praise God on this morning for all the great things he has done. And so I want to, to ask, because I don't want you to sit there with your cup in your hand. I'm going to ask the deaconess, if you all would bring the container and just pass it down so that they can put their cups in it so they won't have to hold on to it because we're going to transition now and to recognize and honoring our ministers. Amen. If you were to say fast and pass it down and you pass your cups all the way to the end. Thank you. 
Because this gift is presented to your brother William from all of Steel Hill. All of the members are presenting this to you as well as to Reverend April. Amen. And they're doing it because they love you. They love you. And they have been and they always will be here for you. Amen. And I just believe because you're ministers of the gospel and you preach your initial sermon, you started off here, it doesn't matter where God takes you to because he's not going to always be you here. But wherever you go, I believe, I truly believe, that you will have the support of this, your family. Thank you. Because this is your family. Thank you. When you're hurt, we're here. When you're happy, we're here. And so we're here just for you. Amen? Amen. 
God bless you. Come on, still here. Okay, if anyone else has anything that they would like to present, and if you have anything that you would like to say to them, you can do that also. I want to thank those ushers for standing there. Like they have like they are. You know I was at Central. Since when? Central.
from seeing the strengths and the weaknesses of our church. But we always live the trail for you to come behind us. And I can't thank each and every one of you enough for your prayers, for your songs, for your patience, Certainly on what's called a strange fruit. <laughs> but you have received me and welcomed me in a very, very special way. Does God really call me to this church? The ancestors spoke very highly of this place. And so we have something special here at Still Hill. And as each of us journey, I pray that what was built here by our forefathers and foremothers will never be lost. That the generations coming behind us will get it and get it from. Special shout out to Bishop Kenneth Monroe, to my presiding elder, Robert Christian. I've been with them a long time. I've seen their work. I'm thankful that the Reverend Sanders City Sister was brought here to this place. And I thank each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart for accepting this strange truth. Thank you.
And so, uh, uh, this afternoon, fellowship with the Wales and Reverend Wolf. And then on our next Sunday, Veterans Day, we we'll recognize them and we will fellowship and have a repast in the fellowship hall again on one next Sunday. Amen? Amen. God bless each of you. God bless you, Reverend April. God bless you, Brother William. Brother William will be, be uh, admitted, I'm assuming. Uh, he will be meeting with the admissions committee. Uh, whatever his desire and God's will is for his life at this stage, then we will see how far he's going to go with that journey. But, but, but uh, I have uh, almost gone to every conference that Bishop Monroe has had. I got home last night from Central and um, was able to witness the first female uh, to be appointed as presiding elder uh, in St. Croix, in the Virgin Islands. All oh, right. Ah. <laughs> in the Virgin Islands. And so uh, I've been so, so happy, so thrilled that she received that appointment. I tell you, God is doing some great things in the lives of his people, and he's going to do great things in your life as well. Amen? Amen. All hearts and minds to be. Amen. Let's go to the Go to the polls. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You are now just 